It's a fact of life that when Liberal Prime Ministers turn up at the National Press Club in Canberra, they're playing an away game. It's the home ground of the so-called progressive uh, parties, the modern Green Left. Scott Morrison got a clear reminder of that today as he arrived. Raise your voice, raise your fist, so more is an arsonist. Raise your voice, raise your fist, so more is an arsonist. And right now, this is particularly hostile ground. The Green left lost the climate election and have been shamelessly using the horror bushfire season to promote their climate policies. The same policies rejected by voters less than a year ago. And they're busy re-prosecuting the same arguments, resisting the coalition government and doing all they can to overturn a democratic outcome, just like the Remainers in Britain and the anti-Trump resistance in the US. Morrison has really angered many of the press gallery journalists who, through the dominance of the public broadcasters and their fellow travellers, lean heavily to the green left of the Australian mainstream. The Prime Minister humiliated them by winning, not only because they'd prefer a Labor Greens government, but because it proved them all wrong. Most of these journalists told their audiences the coalition could not win, staking their credibility on their predictions. But they misinterpreted events, misinterpreted policies, misinterpreted polls, and they were shown up by Scott Morrison. So their resentment is palpable. Many are democracy deniers who reckon they were right and the voters got it wrong. They also hate the fact that Morrison refers to the Canberra bubble. They get very defensive about that in the bubble. None of this means that Morrison is faultless, of course. I don't think overseas holidays are wise any time for Prime Ministers and certainly any leave should be publicly announced. And the sports rorts affair is a shocker that will need a clear response. But the personal, nasty and hysterical assault on Morrison has been over the top. Some commentators who were proven so wrong by Morrison last year seem intent on doubling down. This is a, a leadership test. Uh, again, the country is on the brink of dismissing Scott Morrison as a, as a leader. Prime Minister? Sure. Leader? He's yet to demonstrate that. Uh, so he's, it's a government uh, with, a tr with a tremendous problem. And now the question is whether Morrison can demonstrate the leadership to uh, recover some respect in the public mind and some relevance to the national agenda. Well, they're writing him, writing him off already, hey? They better be careful or they have egg on their face all over again. Stepping into this viper's pit today, Morrison's speech was pretty defensive, framing his priorities on the economy and responding to the bushfires and climate policy debate. It seemed he was responding to the critics rather than ploughing on with his agenda. Locally, when it comes to practical safety of people living in bushfire zones, hazard reduction is even more important than emissions reduction. We need to seriously engage with issues like how we manage native vegetation, how we allow landowners to clear asset protection zones on their property where they're stymied. And of course he was forced onto the back foot over the sports rorts affair too. That's your view and that's what you've put forward. What the government was doing was supporting local community infrastructure projects, and I know that all of which were eligible under the program, all of which will make a difference uh, in the community, and there are always many more. But the main point today really is that the summer silly season is over. The fake news efforts from activists, politicians and journalists to blame bad bushfires on climate change will now be challenged by facts, as will the rhetoric that pretends these were our worst bushfires. And from this week on, with most of the nation back at work, the truth and reality might get a bit more of a run. Morrison and his team need to lift their game, for sure. They need to argue their case and put the facts on the table more often and more forcefully. And they need to shut down the virtue-signalling attention seekers in their own ranks to focus on practical and useful policies. That's what the quiet Australians who elected the coalition and have been drowned out for the past two months by partisan activists and shrill media, that's what the quiet Australians would expect and demand. Morrison's speech today was a solid start.